You're on the Pete Reed Show, a Christmas edition, and uh, well, you've got a really incredible hockey player, sports figure from Canada. So talented. World, world famous, 18 seasons in the NHL, played for Detroit, Los Angeles, and of course ended with uh, New, New York. York. So, uh, you know, I, when I look at you, Marcel, and of course, everybody thought I already had you on the show. Marcel Dion, by <laughs> yeah, the way. Yeah, Marcel Dion. Well, they, you don't have to tell him. Everybody knows it's Marcel Dion. <laughs> They already thought he'd been on the show because they saw my impersonation. Oh, yeah. yes, true. <laughs> Very true. That was funny. Now, in. He can't skate like you, though. Oh, my I'm God. I'm just saying. That's right. No, no, you were just super fast, okay? In 72, actually, uh, in 72, you were a rookie, and you set the record for a rookie at 77 points, which is incredible back then. Now, somebody surpassed that lately, but they play more games now, don't they? Well, oh, it's not a question of games. It's just the the uh, the uh, not really. It was seventy eight games, and uh, but times change. Expansion came in uh, in nineteen sixty seven. So you went from six to twelve, and when I came in, it was two more. It was Buffalo and Vancouver. So uh, this was a first year player. Guy Lafleur was number one. I was number two, and um, I just did my little things like I did in junior hockey. But it took me a while to get going, and just like. Uh, like anything else, uh, once I got going, uh, looking back, I could have scored a few more goals. But uh, that was the start. And uh, by the way, I don't like the term, term uh, terminology of a rookie. Uh, the reason is just I have never called anybody a rookie. And the reason is just after two months, I was the best player. Yeah. Well, that's un amazing. That's man. unheard of. Yeah, Guys, that is 15, amazing. 16 years. So it's always sometimes that because you're a first year player. You get away with things that right? you do because you go to all different cities. You're not prepared for that. The, the meals, uh, the traveling, and uh, uh, so it's um, it's uh, it's a real challenge. And a lot of guys fall asleep in the second year. They think it's it's going to be. They always call it the sophomore year, right? Yeah. But to get themselves in trouble because now that the reality hits you, you got to perform every day. So see, and wow. back then, of course, less teams, way more skilled players. When you get into the league now, you've got a lot of players, and it's a lot of places to fill. I don't think you have the same full skill level. I definitely don't have the same skating skills. But I, I think when you first got out there for the first time, you were in awe because you were, you were looking around, and, oh, I can't believe that. Man. First few games, <laughs> that true? It's true. It's true. Like, uh, the, the problem, and it's, 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 it is what it is. It's today. So the young player, the young kids are watching today. That's what they see. If they go back in, in the films, of mine from 25, 26 years ago, they look, well, how is that? So then you show them, says, this is always skated, this is, look, the guys, they were as big, and, uh, but just different game. And then the thing is, you adjust, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, uh, it's, um, it's so fast uh, that they just forget about the ability to play with the puck. Yeah. And it's simple, I, I will go and see a game right now, and if I didn't know any of the players, I'm gonna sit down and say, there's a buzzer, drop the puck, nothing happened for 60 minutes, and you see, who were the stars? So you want to think, like my son says, said, Dad, when you played, you came to Buffalo, he says, Gilbert Pro would do something, and everybody expect you to do something, yeah. and it did happen. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's, uh, it's different, it's different. It's uh, uh, coach, uh, the, the, the whole concept. So I leave it to them. Yeah. I just respect the way it is. And I don't judge on the game, but it is what it is today. Do yes, yeah, I find. Go ahead. Do you think the prices should drop? Not not the players. Well, I mean that would happen, have to happen. But families, it's hard for family now to go and for them to become involved in these players' lives because the prices of everything is so high. It's uh, it's very expensive, and it's uh, not only the, just to go to the games. It's the kids playing the game uh, at our place. Uh, we receive a lot of uh, teams that come in, and I speak to them. And I asked the little guys from the times they were eight, nine years old, how much did you pay for your stick? They look for mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> they look they for did you pay? Grandma. No. And you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. And then I got on our case. Now to ban them. And now it gets to a point of 13, 14, $200 stick. Yeah. And I look at the parents. I says, well, you must be all rich. I says, I'm rich. I says, you all rich? No, no, no. But you have to make them aware how costly it is. And it's, it's not right. So you transfer this to the game. How can they build a new generation? In my store, and I watch them coming in, where they used to just, you get a lot of Gretzky's and all these players and so on. No request for Crosby, no request. There is, don't, don't get me wrong. But they're not attached, they're attached to the logo. Yeah. 
Yeah. And because yeah. now the autographs are so expensive, the same thing. I don't know. You got out of, got this out of control. So yeah. they're not shut to us. We when you go down there. So I'm going down next Tuesday. I got a suite. I call them and says, uh, uh, "Is the food? Uh, I mean, I'll, you know, can we order the food?" She says, "Don't, don't worry about it. It's all included. We'll make sure we drink and eat a lot." <laughs> But I'm going to leave no, a nice tip, I'll tell you right now. There you go. Well, Marcel Dion is in the house, and uh, we're talking hockey and a yeah. whole bunch of other things when we come back on the Green Show. It's Pete and Reed Show, our special Christmas edition, and we have special guest Marcel Dion with us. I want to know, what was it like to get the Hockey Hall of Fame? And I think it was 92, right? Uh, 92, yes. As yeah. uh, a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, I had to uh, go there and uh, uh, help my uh, good friend Rogi Vashon to be uh, uh, to going into the Hockey Hall of Fame. You know, once you, once you first get out of the game, you just got so much on your mind. Because uh, now this is a part of your life that stops. Because I didn't stay in the game. I had no interest to uh, be part of it. I just wanted to go on my own, which I've done. But it takes a while to settle in. Even when I got, uh, you know, like me, it was three years. I didn't have to wait. Rogi had to wait a long time. I just talked to Luke Robitaille, and uh, he said when he found out there was a chance, he looked at his stats. Said, How come it didn't happen? He won three Stanley Cups. He's a top five uh, goalies in, uh, in the lead ever for, for wins so sometimes it gets political but uh, for me the stats were there everything else was there outside of winning a stanley cup i won many many awards so i was very excited because two things when you do it young the chances are your parents are alive your family yeah. and you watch like um when pat quinn got honored and even pat burns a few years ago it's the kids that get up there and it gets very very emotional so uh, Rogi, his wife, was a big part of him. Just to explain to you how important it is. And she just died a few months uh, prior to that. And oh. she I always felt that she was a great lady. They call that, he deserves to be in the hall. <laughs> well, when, I, when he got it and I gave him the, the, the plaque, I said, don't worry. So she called me last night and her prayers just take care of Rogi. I'm very happy for him. So that was, oh. I was very emotional. That but a, that's I, what it's all about. I yeah. didn't know that. I, I mean, he should have been there. Absolutely. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Let's look at the game today. We got a uh, much bigger defensive zone. Okay, the blue lines come out. The neutral zone is shrunk. Guys like you made the neutral zone live because you could speed through, pick up the puck, and be gone, right? That part of the game is gone, and all kinds of cycling now, which when I played hockey and when you played it, that didn't exist. Yeah. Actually, the whistle, the whistle blew when you held the puck in there because it made the game boring. <laughs> so I, we talk a lot about it. It's almost going in reverse to pawn hockey. And uh, I watched the kids that play peewee, banana midget, and they get used to this transition fast, fast. And then we had... We knew we had to stop when there was a body near the boards, but now it's just sometimes they don't stop and they hit the wrong way because uh, uh, they have a visor and, uh, you know, it's totally different. Um, I, I still think the red line's a mistake. Uh, then they say, well, should have the bigger ice surface. Well, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. And I played on the big ice surface and a lot of scores are 2-1, 3-2, the same thing. It's an hour gap, but who am I, you know, for telling them? And But they, they sold the game. They wanted to be fast. Uh, used to be a lot of uh, grabbing and hooking and so on. Well, you know what? We used to go in front of that. I mean, the goalie didn't whack you. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> now, now they're standing. You see, what's the goalie? Six four, six five. He's trying to look, look where the puck is. So he doesn't even move. They say like, uh, make yourself big. Yeah. So, but again, the guys are skillful, but I don't think they use it to the to the, the best of their ability. You watch the guy now, and he's totally, totally different. It's McDavid. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, even with um, Matthews, you watch them when they first started, score four goals. You still watch McDavid. It's a Gilbert Perrault sort of stick handling. It's incredible. Yeah. Now, there's a guy you're going to watch. You just watch her in a game. He's going to do something. You're going to go, oh, wow. yeah. you're going to, oh, how yeah. do you do it? Even if you, the opposition, there's not enough guys. He's fast. He's got all the elements of the game. And same thing as Crosby. They do things. But we should have a few more of these guys. And we don't. Well, you see, too, the other thing is we've got a lot of big guys now, too, right? Yeah. And to make a good hockey team back then, you needed every size. And actually, the shorter Speed. guy who was there could get through the middle, could take the hits in the middle, right, where the bigger guy couldn't. So you, you had the enforcers. Now you got to, uh, really, you got a game of big guys, right? 
Well, you're asking this to the wrong person because I don't know what it's like to be big. <laughs> yeah, but you were, well, you know the thing is fast and agile. Happened. That's right. But I knew that. Like, yeah, you know, my dad was six one, two hundred forty pounds. So I guess when uh, the, the the little teams come in and the parents say, "Geez, can you say something to my son? He's he's very small." I says, "What do you mean very small?" I says. Okay, by the time I'm done, I'm going to shoot. So I can show them the tapes, the films, the scoring goals. The guy's a 6'2", 6 6 6 Boom, I just plow by them. But you have to work at that, you know. Like I never had a, con a concussion. So ask me if I ever had a concussion. Have you ever had a concussion? If I did, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into it. <laughs> so, but I never did. And we're talking, and Eric Lindros, he's got the big guy. This guy's that big. And uh, he had over eight. So it was heads up hockey. I always played. I got hit a lot. But, you know, when I show all the photos, I says, watch all the time, guys. You'll never see me with my head down. There's the puck, and I'm here. I'm right there. And you I had the that. moves, though. Like, you just, and the you, speed. You, yeah, you, well, you had the agility to go from know, side to solid, side. Back. Solid on the skate. Yeah. But, but, but a lot of it comes with uh, passion of the game, uh, the will to perform. And that's what I've done in the business world. It's the same thing. I get up in the morning and say, there we go, you know. And I'm not, I haven't lost that. And um, a lot of players that you play with... Uh, when it's tough, they, they sort of gave up, and you need somebody to say it. everything's okay. Sometimes you write on your coach, your manager, and son, yeah. and sometimes they don't do it, and you lose that player. And that player, because I played with a lot of guys that made them better, and they were happy. When I knew when a guy does an injury, Peter, if he come in the morning, now he knows he's playing with me, his preparation of the game was not the same thing, because yeah. he knew he was going to get the puck. He knew he had some opportunities, right? He did well, and then the sad part, when the regular came back, he went back, yeah. his preparation yeah. was not the same. Isn't so, that amazing? So where do you think your ambition came from? Like, was it just well, You know something? what, I'm going to hold you in that. You know, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna go back, I want to know. Yeah, we're going to go back to Drummondville, Quebec, and, and find out where that passion came from when we come back to the people. It's Pete Reed here with Marcel Dion on a special edition of our show. And oh my gosh, I love listening to you talk. You have such great stories. <laughs> but when we ended the last one, I asked you what your, how you think you came with, up with all this ambition. Was it your parents? Like, yeah, I think it think? is. I, I think uh, I was the oldest of eight kids. I uh, left home when I was uh, 15 years old. And uh, we had a, a little corner store that, uh, you know, like uh, we're selling beer and all that stuff. So in those days, you're, you're a 15 year old, you're pretty mature, and now you're 35 years old before you <laughs> still living at home. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. Hey, mom, dad, hey, <laughs> so uh, you learn that, and I see my dad do things during hard time. And then this is a generation. I got gray hair, I'm 65. I saw starvation, I saw people um, not having anything. My siblings, uh, and my young brother that we have 19 years uh, difference never saw that you know he always thinks that's the house that my mom and dad lived it was like that no it was not so then you you feel and I, the biggest thing in my life and i tell you that i teach the kids i like to keep on saying it's that when i tell the kids this is uh, when i turned 13 years old and i saw what was going on i made a promise to myself that i would never 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 embarrass my mom and dad and i never did I, my that, kids, that's something we've lost. Peter, right? My kids yeah. have, my kids have, but the the good thing about it, and I tell them, they have mature, they got back on track, they're really good parents, and they do very well. But it was a battle, and we had rules. You don't like the rules. Here's what it is. My wife says, got a phone call at two thirty in the morning. I says, what do you want me to do? Well, what are you going to do, sis? I'll I'll answer back at nine o'clock in the morning. So that's the way it is. And you know what? They have to learn go to process. Mistakes you make early in your life sometimes are very costly, but society and ourselves right now, that's when you got to hey, do the right things, and that's that's my memo all my life. That's right. That's been, the, it has not changed. Learn from it. Good, yeah. 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 So, um, Marcel Dion is telling us all kinds of stories, but he hasn't told us the stories I want to hear. Oh, what's story. that? Because he was actually bullied. He learned to skate out in the pond like a lot of us did back then, that's okay? That's all we had was yeah. to skate outside, right? And then you go into the rink, and what happens? That, well, it's just, uh, I was eight years old, and my uncle, that's the biggest break. A lot of times, the guys, uh, they ask the question, who is the biggest influence? Well, it's all that. This. It was my uncle. He takes me there. It was uh, obviously organized hockey. It just went from a pond hockey. It played from the time I was four or five years old. 
But I didn't know about the rules. I didn't know about the blue line or red lines. Plus, we didn't have a television. It's hard to believe, right? I was sitting on radio. I got there because I said, I told you earlier that uh, about stupid. Uh, uh, you know, everybody was calling me stupid. I started to go offside. You know, I started to panic. And uh, I didn't like that, but I, it, was, it is what it is. I started to cry, and I was intimidated. So I came back the following year. So the following year, I says, I remember the guys were making fun of me, right? So I says, what's your name? He says, John. I says, John. He says, remember John last year? Just you called me stupid. See the puck? Eh? Try to get the puck away from me. I was going like this. <laughs> I was nine years old. This is true story. I was nine years old. Nobody could take the puck away from me. Suddenly, for being a stupid kid, they all love me. When I asked the kids, what do you think they love you? He says, because now you're good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I said, now they learn. And from that time, at my age level, myself, Gilbert Perot and Guy Lafleur played against each other all the time. And wow. it was absolutely Pee Wee Tournament, 10,500 people. Wow. You're signing autographs, standing wow. ovations. We were different. Yeah. You know, we, we were teammates, but when you did, we did things with the puck. Lafleur had an unbelievable shot. Uh, today, it's this, you see a little bit until when I was in uh, playing the NHL, I heard about this kid that scored 300 goals in a season. I says, who's that kid? <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <Yeah. laughs> and let me tell yeah. you, he's a good guy. He's a good friend. He, uh, he didn't stop in the NHL either. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back on the uh, Pete and Reed show, we're going to have some fun with ourselves. It's Pete and Reed. Sure is. And Marcel. Here. And Marcel. <laughs> Having a great time. Love listening to the stories. <laughs> On and off the air. Authors. Well, it's because it's, I travel a lot, and uh, I, I got a lot of guys that are in touch with me, and I'm very open. Uh, and if you like people, that's all it is. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's about respect. I, I'm very privileged, very successful. I'm healthy. My kids are healthy. But not everybody are, right? That's right. That's so, you're absolutely right. And that's the need, you know, Peter, to just, uh, we're involved, you're involved in the community, and I just love to do as much as I can. This community has been very, very good for me, so. So let's um, let's talk about community, but let's talk a little bit about politics. Let's have some fun here. Uh-oh, <laughs> this could be trouble. Yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go over to the U.S. side. Oh, I knew you were going there. <laughs> let's talk about what happened there. What's your opinion? Well, first of all, I am an American. All my boys, my kids are all Americans, so we dual citizen. My two boys, one lives in North Tonawanda, and uh, one lives in uh, uh, Lakeland, Florida. And all I can tell you is just that they, uh, they did pull for Trump. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd just like to tell uh, to everybody to don't panic and don't get excited and see things and so on. But I've been a businessman for a long, long time. And uh, uh, to anybody out there that uh, looks at uh, a small business, okay, to start up a small business, which I did, I'm going to tell you something. When Obama, when, uh, not Obama, but uh, yeah, with Obama and Harper and, and Power, and when the 2-8, uh, we had a sort of recession, a lot of things were not going really well, they both came out and said, small business, a backbone of the economy. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you try to borrow money. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I couldn't get it. And I did it. You see our business is very simple, million dollar business. And I said, what about the other people? I was able to finance myself and do things. And it's not explained properly. So uh, it's very misleading. And I think what you see already in the state stock market, listen, it's only four years, but we have to make our country rich again. Okay? We're giving everything. We don't have the money. Yeah. So, you know, you come back, we got the hospital, we got the homeless, we got this, we got diabetes and, and so on. So. We have to start rethinking, focus, focusing, and I, I know you're charitable. I know you are. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have anything. Here's the thing that's misleading right now in, in, in this, the peninsula. I lived it in 1976. To all of you out there that will end up with a million-dollar home, you're going to find out, yes, you have a million-dollar home, but you have no money. <laughs> and it's a fact. Yes. It's yes. happening already. Yes. My daughter has gone through this. I lived this in 76 when my house was 185000 and today it's three million dollars. How can it be? Never done anything to the house. Who's moving in? So we are not preparing our people here right now because I, I predicted to the bank when I go there. So Marcel told me ten years ago because I was involved with a development for two hundred homes, build the houses, and you know did did pretty well. And I told my builders, you haven't seen nothing because money was really tight in Niagara Falls. I'm not yes. talking about the peninsula. Yeah. Now out of nowhere, and I I bet you the city's not ready. It's, they all think they have discovered the peninsula. 
They're coming in waves. Yeah, they They're are. coming in. If that gold train ever comes, we'll, we'll have a million people living here. Easily. And once they come here, Peter, you know, come here, they say, this is beautiful. So they come to my store, it says, hospital is here, shoppers road mark is here, food basics over there, the nice little restaurants are there, it says, do you have to worry about traffic? No, just the train when it comes to coming. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to be aware. It's and our, and our kids that are going to Brock and all the schools and so on, forget it. There's no jobs to keep those people no. here. So no. it's a servicing town, so so on. It's crazy. And uh, you know what? People are trying to sell their homes. They got 300000 now. Sell it. Where are you going to go? Exactly. exactly. Everything's Where are you going to go? Nowhere. You're going to go nowhere. And if we look at, at Trump, he's creating jobs. That's a fact. He's doing it before he's even president. He's creating jobs now. He's, cre he's creating situations where people are, their whole lives are going to change and support. But we can come over here to Ontario. We've got a whole different story going on here, right? Absolutely, because they, they, <clears throat> I am a businessman. My daughter, I showed her how to do it. I did it on my own. I was a hockey player. But a hockey player was like a part of my life, but it's not everything. At the age of 26, I had 24 pieces of property in California. I learned how to pay the bills. I do things and so on. My lifestyle is very, do you want me to be on a private jet? Do you want me to be on a limousine? Do you want me to be a tuxedo? I do all that. But I don't care. I come back. I'm happy to be with you because we have more fun. <laughs> was it your mother upstairs? I met. Was it? It's actually That's Director producer. John. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. That's right. So yeah. that was good. So the thing is that you can't lose the fact of that. But you got to feed the people. Give them some incentive. We're teaching kids that work for us. And I watch them. They're minorities. I'll tell you one thing. Smile. Be kind. Thank you. Come prepare to work. We train you. Once you leave us, you're ahead, but we have to respect too. So whoever they go, I hope to respect that. They can always come back. And it's not the ones we have to worry about. For example, just one, a little girl working for us, didn't have much. My daughter's pretty smart. She went and at the office max or something, or Staples, to buy something for the school. This is very emotional. I said, Dad, you won't believe it. She says, what? I walked in and says, she, I said to her, says, uh, she thought it was first my granddaughter gets stuff. She says, no, no. Go and help yourself. And says, and my daughter said, you know that? She took the cheapest stuff. If they were my kids, they would have taken the most uh, expensive stuff. Yeah, it's got to be so name this, brand, right? So, so this is what we have to do as a society. We have to start to dig in. Don't wait for the government. The government's all of us. When you see they don't have any money, it's our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> That's right, but we're good people. We find a way. And, and, and the reason, too, like I've been to Russia. I've been there five times. I met Vladimir Putin. I met a lot of people. And the number one thing everybody's got to put their, in their heads, and I've witnessed it and I've talked about it, everybody, everybody in the world want to come to America. Everybody in the yeah. world wants it. Doesn't matter how bad this is something, they love it. Those Russians, I remember Phyllis Pizzou said, those stinky Russians, <laughs> he, says, he says that we had the uh, uh, an anniversary, right? He says, even if they gave me $100,000, I wouldn't go, right? So there was a group of us, we went, and I just, I was the first one off the plane, I looked on the tarmac, Phil was there. <laughs> <laughs> Got his but you know what? <laughs> well, they were good Russians. There was someone. I we met Vladimir Putin. So I was with Wayne Gretzky. We did a thing. He says, Wayne, I mean, Harper Har Har and Obama can't talk to this guy. Let's talk to him. We're gonna, we're gonna lose him up. We're so gonna say, what, what, hey. what kind of deals do you want to make? It's your world. So, and you know what? It's so stupid. They just get in that level of play, and um, now we just they're bad people. So then we can't talk. You always have to talk to your enemy. I don't oh, care what you say. Keep Keep and I watch the pundits. Closer. I watch the pundits. Oh, you can't talk to the back. How do you know? You sit on your behind. <laughs> You're not there in the trenches. Yeah. And you know who are leaders? Not the guys that are very articulate. It's the guys that are in that locker room. That's the the guys. When they speak up, that's the ones you want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Deep down side. Exactly. This is going to be a tough one. Going, you get me going with my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Get my uh, wife down here. She's in there. <laughs> Check it out. You know what? We're going to come back. When we come back, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough, folks. We're going to have one or two word answers to the quiz with my son. You're back with Pete and Reed and Marcel. This, you know what? I'm looking forward to this. I was looking forward to this two weeks ago when I was just doing a <laughs> We're going to ask questions. I'm going to start with the sports, with hockey. Okay. 
One or two word answers, that's all you're allowed. Okay, go to the NHL, back when you played. The fastest. The what? fastest hockey player. When I played. Uh, real quick, could, could, could the fastest player I just, uh, well, Guy Lafleur was one of them. Okay, the nicest. They were all nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. being politically correct. I know, I know the bad guys. They were all nice. Those guys were pretty good, yeah. Right. Your three teams, your favorite team that you played for. Of course, it's uh, Los Angeles. I was there for 12 years, but uh, they were pretty good, all yeah. of them, yeah. Toughest player. Toughest player, and what I mean, a, a toughest to play against, or just a physical guy? Yeah, but, physical. Uh, there, was a, there, was, there was a few that never bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't catch you, right? That's exactly right. I played with Dave Schultz. Gotta say that. But oh, there he, you he go. was a nice. It was a nice guy. I swear yeah, to God. Still is. It was it nice. It was, it was nice to have him. I had lots of room. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Most they never skilled. bothered. They never bothered. Most skilled. Most skills does a lot. But there's a, if you take one or three guys, I, there's, I'll, I'll tell you three. Bobby Orr in my time. There's no doubt about it. Wayne Gretzky when he came in, and Mario Lemieux nice. by far. And of course yeah. you, but you can't say, talk about yourself. Okay. <laughs> Best defenseman. Mr. Fensman, there was a few uh, guys that I were tough for me. It was Dennis Podvan, Larry Robinson, good players of my time. Yeah. Best forward. Best forward of all time. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, it's Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Now goalies, you put, you put a lot of pucks in that. Okay. Oh man, I love those goalies. That's right. I love them. <laughs> I love him. So who would be the best, toughest, hardest goalie to score on? No, it's, it, I, it's unbelievable. I called him. I didn't know that. You get all your sets about all goalies, and I couldn't believe it was I didn't score that many. It was Tony Esposito. And I called him. I says, Tony, he's a good friend. I, I can't believe it. Just get the stats. I says, I didn't score that many against you. He says, he says hey, Pee-wee. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I have your number. There you go. Hang up the phone, sealer. Right. It's true. My last of the easy questions for us, because then it goes to Rita. <laughs> The greatest hockey player of all time. The greatest? Well, they're going to pick now the top 100 players coming up uh, next January, 100 years, right? It is so unfair. It's just so many great players, different stages, different, different time. But there's no doubt when I tied with Wayne Gretzky uh, for a scoring title, I had two more goals. I knew he was going to change the game forever. He was that good. Now, they can't go back on the films and try to break it down. If he would play this today, they, I don't care. These guys are going to go back 20 years from now. They're going to look at it. But he played with a lot of passion. Yeah. And Mario could have broke. Mario Lemieux could have broke all his record, but he got hurt. Yeah. Had yeah. cancer yeah. Yeah. and yeah. so on. But these guys, wanna, Mario was 6'5", very, skill, very skillful. And Great uh, there's no doubt. And, and I had the opportunity to play against those guys. I played against Gordie Howe coming back in the NHL in Hartford. And when I got drafted with Detroit with Gordie, Gordie retired. I was looking forward so much, but he had already 26 years in the NHL. Oh, I know. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Great players. I cut some great, great players. All right, here it goes. This okay. is the tough part. This is a rapid fire round. Okay, okay. So, quick. Favorite toy you grew up with? Toy? Hockey stick. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you had your first kiss? First kid, two and a half. Two. <laughs> best friend in grade school. A what? Your best friend. In, in grade school. Yeah. I never had a chance to have any friends. I was never, I was always gone doing something. <laughs> okay. We're well, moving on. Between you and your wife, who rules the roost? That's my wife. <laughs> or, or his daughter. Which yeah. one of your kids is most like you and why? My daughter. Uh, she's got two side, two personalities. One is absolutely incredible. The other one, it's, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you could pick another profession, if you could have picked another profession, what would it have been? That's a question I tell you I look back. I, there's no doubt I, uh, I had a, a nature of a business. Uh, I would have become a businessman because I learned to trade early in my life. But that's a good question because yeah. I never thought of it, but I was lucky to play 18 years. Absolutely. If you were stuck on an island and you only had one food to eat, what would it be? One food to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So You'd be doesn't. eating that forever, so what would it be? It's a banana, that's it. Banana. Oh, that's that's it. Potassium. Need, right? That's right. <laughs> Easy. I've been to those islands, I know. Okay, something you wish you had done but never did. Just never done. I wish never did. Uh that would catch me on guard. I mean, um you know what? It's almost like uh go back in time. Go back in time. And uh 
apologize to a lot of people. Really? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. It is. So, what's your favorite thing to do when you are not working? Favorite thing to do? It's sit on the couch, read the newspaper, and have a power snooze. Yeah, which I imagine with you is only probably about three minutes. <laughs> and, <laughs> Every one of them. And I wake up and I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's true. You can't. You can't do this to me. And the best player of all time in golf. In golf. There is no doubt that in the segments you look, uh, the some and I know the history. Jack Nicklaus cut some, some here and there, and Tiger was the guy, and he looks like he'll never break his record. So, the toughness, the passion, and we just lost our Arnold Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Great, great people, and uh, I, I bet on a guy like that for sure. My favorite was Ben Crenshaw. Yes. And I, I got one more, guy. one more <laughs> to ask you. Um, the most fun day you've ever had in your life, if you had to pick one that was just memorable and spectacular, what would it be? Oh, she, she, I know that's know, hard. It's just, it's just the most fun day. I mean, it's, well, it's just if it was something, it's just and uh, we won the, the championship with the uh, St. Catharines Blackhawks against the uh, uh, Toronto Marlboros in Toronto. We were not going to supposed to win. Uh, we just were not good enough. They had that big at Parkway team. We smoked them four, <laughs> th four straight. And out of that team, uh, Steve Schott became a very good friend of mine, played with me, and one's a closest friend, Billy Harris. It's a nice. small work. And I got to know uh, Dave Garner was at center. So of all these things, we still talk to each other. And that's what we like. I, they call me. I love to talk to those guys. And we go back in time. And that's <laughs> yeah. fun. Great hair. <laughs> Go back in time. It's really exciting. Oh, that's that awesome. was a fun time. Christmas. You like Christmas? Absolutely. So what, what's the tradition for the Dion family? Ours is very simple right now. It's just like I was never big on, on gifts, but growing up, that was the thing. The holidays lasted for two weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, can you remember in California now with the Dion's? We go to Palm Springs or the day off, or we go to Big Bear Mountains. So I got some properties. Palm Springs spending Christmas, not the same. Go up to Big Bear, you had snow. <laughs> yeah. You could yeah. snow. It's just, oh, it feels great. Then you had only one day to get back. Now the tradition after I retired, uh, going back, it's the gift and so on, and uh, owning a retail store, watch all the people, they're all stressed out. And at the end of the day, it only lasts like five minutes. You open up, there's little kids, you open up and they look at you, and you say, oh, we got another gift there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? It's a time to uh, say to ourselves, it's, it's wonderful. We're very happy. The thing that's really important is that uh, we think about people that don't have anything. And that's why I love those charities, yeah. toys drive and, and, and yeah. food drives and so on. Make that person or those, those little kids happy for that day. That's what it's all about. Then it's over. Now you got to recharge your batteries for another year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bills are coming in there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. Now, if you're, if you're looking to speak to young people, What's important? You, you see, you said, uh, it was key what you said about, you know, when I look back, I wish I had to apologize to people. Um, it's respect, yeah. it's understanding other people, and we're here, we're here to help other people, right? Is that not what we're not, really and here And not for? to judge. Yeah. They, they, that's, that's the key. And it's, uh, a lot of things happen today, and I tell my employees, see, this is about respect. Why are they calling me? They trust me. I have people that you would not believe who calls me, and I said, because I respect people, it doesn't matter who you are. If I'm just talking to her, she's by herself, and there's a crowd, I'm happy because she's a crowd. And pay attention. Pay attention to the elderly. Be nice. Can I help you? Put your hands on something. Is everything okay? You need some Once you learn that, it stays with you. You do it automatically. There's a lot of people are not just like us. Some people are sick. Some people are sick very age. Yeah. I think everybody should in their lifetime have an opportunity to go to a veteran hospital. I did. In Los Angeles, you come out of there, and that stayed for me forever. Yeah. Eighteen-year-old corporal got run over by a tank, and you go back in there, right? For the rest of his life, when I was I was playing for the LA Kings, he cannot move at all. He's paralyzed, only his yeah. eyes, and he turned turned the body. And you say to yourself, this young man fought for us, for our freedom, and now they're burning flags. I know. It's I learned from yeah. that. I learned. I said. Who am I? I mean, 18 years, so you, your life doesn't matter anymore. It stays with you, but you learn how to deal with it because now there's a lot of things come to your way. And if you get involved, you get involved, good things will happen.
Yeah. yeah. Thank thank God for what we have here yeah. in, in North America and Canada and the U.S. We, we've got so much. We've got yeah. way more than than ninety five percent of the world. It's now, true. You're always helping with charity. Always, we've had you doing stuff with us. <laughs> yes. Today. And it's always yes, I'll be there, and he does it, and he's just amazing. Um, you got a great store and a great restaurant in Niagara Falls. <laughs> Listen, if you're a hockey fan, you got to get <laughs> and down. And what great food? Yeah. Uh, Montrose Road in Niagara Falls. I, I have been told that the stuff in the afternoon is fantastic in the restaurant. I've only been there for breakfast, but I love it. And uh, the memorabilia you got goes from room to room to room. It, it's, a, it's like one cave I to the next I can attest to that because I've walked through yeah. the whole thing. How do I get out of here? <laughs> Everything is in there. It's amazing stuff. And you know what the best part of it is? This man right here is walking around. He's there. And, and he's, you know what? He is it's doing not a it. It's, you're doing it because you love people. And you yeah. can see it, yeah. and, and you're yeah. sitting down talking yeah. to people, yeah. and uh, they get a chance to meet you, and you're taking the stuff off the tables, and your daughter's in there. The one of the yeah. funniest people I know. Yeah. She's hilarious. I only see the good side. Yeah. Of her. I have, you know, I don't. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know you know what? Uh, the secret is just it's very simple. I meet a lot of very wealthy people, and I just got back from Quebec, and I was a great line. I pay attention to that. All these little lines in the newspaper. He said, "You know, Marcel, he has a cranberry farm, very successful." 240 employees and he's out there so and I went through the plant and and so on so he says uh, me and my partner are very rich we don't need any more money anymore and I was listening it was very good eh? he says all we want is to care take care of our people that work for us and we are developing a healthy product and I'm going I says this is what you want to hear and you would yeah. walk it in you would never know that these two guys are that well off so they've come back in the community, they do things, we need more of that, you know? And I got a new cars, they got cars just like me. You yeah. can't tell, it's the practical things, right? So that, that's important, yeah, and, a lot of and, people, and you learn from yeah, that, you, you know, learn. Right? A lot of people don't know, because Trump never did this, but yeah. when it starts to come out, this guy has given all kinds of money to people. Yeah. And he just didn't, he didn't want anybody, and that's the key. It's well, not, most, a, I did it, I handed it out, you get these big stars, I'm giving all this money. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not about that, it's no. about, Helping somebody, and, and who cares who knows yeah. about it, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a big us aware, and I, I, I really like to teach young people, but it's a combination because schools and our schools are struggling now. I think we lost uh, the ability to uh, uh, respect uh, mm -hmm. teachers, cannot do any, you cannot hug a kid at school. Uh, I know I'm there, yeah. so the government's gonna stay out of it, and they gotta go back and say, Hey. When you grow up, you says you never told a cop to get lost. Yeah. Now the kids are telling you, he says, You oh, can't yeah. talk like that, you get back here. You get back here, and then you know, they can't. They have no authority. They don't care. So, we have to fight for this because they're the next generation of things, you know. So I, uh, and I how bad it's bad now. How bad is it going to get? Well, I fight for that, but you know what? You got to corner them and put them in a position. That says, I'm the boss here. Until you understand that, that's fine. But I'm the boss man. There's rules, and you got to obey by the rules. And most of the time, you know what? They're good kids. Yeah. They try. They of course, try, they're good kids. You know, yeah. and they go back home, but you don't know what they get at home, right? Yeah. Marcel, thank you so much. Just, pleasure. Yeah, promise us that you're going to come back holidays. again. Happy, Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy you holidays. Oh, Merry thank Christmas. you so much. Great show. Yeah. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time on the Pete Reed Show.